Hey everyone, so uh, just a few minutes ago I finished filming a video where I test out Ubuntu on the Flex 5 and to be honest the video wasn't terribly successful. Um, Ubuntu wasn't a very good experience uh, and just in general do didn't work uh, as much as I'd like it to. After watching the Ubuntu segment of this video, let me know if there's anything you'd like me to test uh, in the future with Ubuntu, but in the meantime, let's cover something else that people might find more interesting. Basically, one of the complaints I've been seeing in the comments is that the Flex 5 only has one display out. That kind of sucks for people that want to have a multi-monitor setup outside of the internal display. However, certain tech companies have come up with a solution, and that solution is basically one of these. You can see it's a USB 3.0 uh, HDMI dongle and it's type A and you may be wondering well how the heck does that work uh, basically what this adapter does is it plugs in uh, you when you plug it in you'll get basically a flash drive pop-up and it'll have a driver install in there so you just run the driver install and reboot your computer and then when you have it rebooted you can just simply take this plug it into the USB port of the computer or alternatively you could get a DC barrel for the laptop and get a USB-C to type A and plug that type A connector into the adapter and then into the USB-C port on the side of the device. So in this instance I already have the driver installed because I tested this beforehand. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, So we have this HDMI port here now so I'm going to unplug the camera. You can see no signal right now and I'll plug HDMI into the adapter. And we appear to have some sort of weird artifacting here. One second, let me try that again. One more time to see if it works this time. There we go. Okay, yep, so now if I go over here, yep, you can see we have my display here. I'll right click and I'll go to display settings and I'll hit identify. You can see that this is two. And I'll drag this box over from my Flex 5. So you can see it's 1080p, we'll go to advanced display settings and we'll switch this to display 2 so you can see that info. You can see uh, Elgato, that's my capture card, connected to Fresco Logic ID, IDDCX adapter, which that's basically the RayQ adapter that I have here. You can see it's outputting 1080p 60 and just to test that let's run some 60, uh, 60 FPS content on the screen to see how that looks. It looks like it seems to be operating uh, correctly. We can even try a game. I'll load up a game here. Uh, one thing I should note is that this adapter is not the uh, best adapter by any means. This one in particular doesn't seem terribly reliable, so I'll probably end up returning it. Uh, in the description, I'll have affiliate links for those down below in case you want to check one out. Uh, I don't. You don't absolutely need to, uh, and I would only recommend <laughs> using one if you have a legitimate use for one, because these are pretty finicky. Format, not so- oh, I didn't have my- <laughs> I wasn't plugging it in all the way. I am noticing a perceivable delay on this particular adapter. I know some people were saying the delay wasn't too terrible on, um, the, uh, nicer adapters I looked at, but I can definitely tell that this is not like instantaneous by any means. For instance, I'll um, I'll point my mic down at the keyboard and I'll turn the gain up and you can hear when I hit the key. And now I'll switch over to native HDMI. Okay, and I'll do the same thing. Key. So as, as you can tell, uh, it's far from perfect. This particular adapter at least is not the best one, but you can see that we do have 1080p60 out. Uh, so if for some reason you wanted to just have some sort of extra display output so that you could like record your screen and you don't want to lose like, a secondary monitor, then this is a pretty decent option. This adapter works at least for uh, stuff that's not terribly latency dependent. Uh, we can try loading up a YouTube video. Yeah, okay, so it does seem to be... Yeah, the latency on the video is not super good. Uh, it does seem to be a bit behind where it should be, but... Again, this this adapter was about the cheapest one I could find that wasn't reviewed, like, doesn't work garbage, so... 
Uh, yeah, I'll point you to one that actually has reputable reviews. It's likely going to be pretty expensive, but you can't spend another like 100 or 150 bucks, uh, or you just can't find another machine that fits your needs better than the Flex 5, then something like a USB 3.0 to HDMI adapter might be your best bet. Otherwise, the video will continue on to the Ubuntu portion now, so if you're interested in that, you can check that out. Otherwise, you can check the affiliate links below for a link to buy the Flex 5, as well as uh, an adapter that I'd recommend trying out. The links will both be in the description. So today we're going to be taking a look at Ubuntu and seeing how it runs on this machine. What I've got here is a NVMe SSD on an external bay that I'm just going to be installing Ubuntu onto. Um, I'm not going to comment much on how snappy the system is because, again, it's over this kind of crappy um, external drive, but that won't impact actual system functionality very much, so it's nothing to worry about. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load up the latest Ubuntu ISO, and we're going to flash it onto my little disk here. Alright, so now let's reboot onto the boot disk here on that little flash drive. Let's reboot onto it. Now press power and start hitting F12. Okay, and they'll switch over to Lexar. And then Ubuntu. Now this is Ubuntu 20. We'll see how this goes. Looks like it's working fairly well. Okay, so here we are. We're going to go through a pretty standard install process here. Yep, okay, download updates, install third party. Everything's been partitioned out, and we're just going to install Ubuntu now. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so the install's done, so we'll just restart. Yep, there we go. We're booting Ubuntu. Okay, let's try to get switched over to HDMI. Yeah, I'm not having much luck finding info on <coughs> if there's any integrated graphics drivers for the Ryzen 4000 uh, CPUs for Ubuntu. So unfortunately, we'll be external camera only while testing this. See if I can even get the display brightness to go down. No, not properly. Anything that is uh, going down will pretty much black it out. Up will bring uh, pull it up, but yeah, it doesn't seem to be working entirely correctly. Unfortunately, uh, let's see if I can get see if GIMP's installed. I don't know. If Ubuntu comes... I don't believe it does. I'll have to probably load that on. We might as well check settings. <laughs> and we have Wacom tablet. Select tablet. It says no tablet detected. It also says no stylus. Does the touch screen work? Yep. Let me grab the stylus. Okay, so I've got the stylus here. And you can see that the cursor is following my stylus. So that's good. I've installed GIMP, so let's load up GIMP. Thing worth noting, the uh, touchpad and keyboard work pretty much perfectly. You can scroll easily on the touchpad. Uh, typing has been working fine. You can also check the volume. Yep, speakers are working. Let's test uh, YouTube. Are you ready for a better broker? Tastyworks is the award winning. Yep, okay, so the speakers are definitely working fine. So I'll just create a new thing here. Select the paintbrush. And let's see. I mean, the, the pen input is working, um, there's just no pressure sensitivity that I can find. Usually, um, in my experience, when you're using the paintbrush tool, it'll allow you to uh, basically have <coughs> that pressure sensitivity, but it doesn't seem to be detecting it. Let's check a few things here. Input devices. Wacom HID pen stylus. Uh, let's say screen. Yeah. 
see if that will work. I'll just close that and see. Does that make a difference? Okay. It's doing something now. I don't know why it's automatically going to um, that mode. That's a little odd. It's still not doing pressure sensitivity. Uh, we'll go back to input devices. It says it has a lot of keys. Here's pressure. I don't know what that's doing. It doesn't seem to be indicating anything. Uh, let's go back to settings. You can see this is the stylus page. Uh, and it's not detecting really anything. It also doesn't detect the tablet. And uh, honestly, I wouldn't know how to get this to work properly uh, in the first place, unfortunately. So um, if you guys have any tips for me on how to get <laughs> this stuff working um, in Ubuntu, I can give it a shot. But it's been anything but plug and play, as you can tell. But yeah, so brightness, brightness, uh, brightness settings don't work at all. Um, I don't know what power state the CPU is going to be in, uh, so I'll have to try a stress test to see if I can monitor the uh, sensor data, and we'll see how that goes. But yeah, uh, it just it just is. It seems like uh, Ryzen 4000 is just a bit immature for this to be really super practical. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'll be continuing with this video uh, past this point because it's just not. Uh, a whole lot to cover here. Um, Ubuntu does install and it does boot and uh, it's not like slow or anything uh, but the experience is not super great and I cannot find anywhere that has drivers for the uh, integrated graphics for this processor. Uh, if you're able to find the drivers or find some reddit posts or something somewhere that have some instructions on how to get things to work in Ubuntu you can let me know. But otherwise, I don't see much point in continuing to test things out on here. I hope this was at least somewhat helpful for folks that were looking for some kind of testing of Ubuntu on this hardware. I won't be benchmarking just because nothing seems to be really working properly, and I don't see much of a point in doing that until the hardware works. So we'll see once some drivers come out. We might uh, come back to this and give it another shot. But that's all I have for today. If you have specific feedback on what you want me to test in Ubuntu, just let me know in the comments and I'll make a follow-up video. Be sure to get subscribed. Uh, like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. And I'll be back in a day or two with another video, probably about benchmarking in Windows and probably with the AMD generic drivers to see if that makes any sort of performance difference at all. That's all for the video and I hope that was helpful.